Morena kia koutou. It's wonderful to welcome you to this uh, service, this karakia this morning, uh, which is the um, Palm Sunday service. Actually, we're following the liturgy of the Passion today in our readings and in the sermon that, sermon that Bishop Kittle is going to bring to us later on. And um, we've got some readings from our rangatahi from around the Amorangi. In fact, one of them is all the way from Sydney. And so it's great to be able to share together, to bring ourselves together, even though we are kept separate in this time of isolation. Welcome to the service. Let's take a moment to pause in silence and prepare our hearts for worship. And then we're going to be led by um, uh, um, David Tapini from Hatia, who's going to um, lead us in our opening hymn, hymn number 80, Tamangako Mari. Fano ati kraiti koto tato nei tona tina na e mahi nei ite au no mai haere mai ki tona ahure o tapu e mihi ana ki a kaito ko a kranga tia nei he tote he mara matanga mote au i roto i to kaito to hinge ki a koa ki a hari faka moe me te tia te atua te kai ho mai o te tu mana ko te kai ho ho i te rongo. Amine kia hari tahi tātou, ko i hukaraiti te maramatanga te mātapuna o te ora. Ko ia te whakamoimiti te karoria i tonoa mai nei e te matua, hei whakahau i te ao, hei huri e te wai, hei waina, hei whakatahuri e te ngākau, kia tū tapu ai ki tōna aruaro. Tā pai atu o tātou ngākau ki a te karaiti, Nā nā nei i whakatinana te kupu, hei toko i te ora, karoria ki a koe e te karaiti, whakatapua mai mātou. I te whānau a te karaiti, i te mea kua haratātou, whakatata mai ki te hohau i te rongo. He aroha tō tātou atua. E te atua aroha, e mōhio nei ki ngā mea katoa, whakārahia mātou i rotu i o mātou ngoi koretanga. Aroha mai i o mātou takanga ki te hea, i o mātou whakāro, i a mātou mahi. Tohungi a mātou. Mā te atua e muru au koutou hara, ki a mau te rongo. Kia koa, kia hari, 
ko te karaiti te aranga te, te ar- taroi o tureri. Ko te karaiti te pauhiringa waka, whakapaingia te atua tō tātou kaihanga, whakapaingia te atua tō tātou kaitau rima, whakapaingia te atua tō tātou kaiunga ki te ao whānui. We come now to um, our sentence and collect for the day. Ka tukuai i te ingo o ihu ngā turi katoa o ngā mea i te rangi, o ngā mea i te whenua, o ngā mea i, ro- I raro i te whenua. A, kia whakaai ngā aro, arero katoa ko ihu karai te te ariki, he whakakororia i te atua matua. And in English, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Philippians 2 verses 10 and 11. And our collect. E ihu, nō tō urunga atu ki hiru harama, ka pōwhiritia koe e te iwi ki ngā nikau, me te karanga whakahonore atu, i te wahangutanga o te umere. Haere tahi tonu a ana mātou i tō taha, a tainō atu me he rīpeka, mō te kororio o tō ingo tapu. Amen. The Old Testament reading today is taken from Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1 to 14. The Valley of Dry Today's reading comes from the Old Testament in Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 to 9. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with his word. Morning by morning he wakens my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Today's reading. We'll say together the verses from Psalm 30, which are set for today. Sorry for the little blips, by the way. Together. You have not given me up to the power of the enemy. You have set my feet where I may walk at liberty. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eyes are wasted from grief, my soul and my body also. My life is worn out with sorrow, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me in my misery, my bones are wasted away. I am the scorn of my enemies, and a byword among my neighbours. Those of my acquaintance shudder at the sight of me. When they see me in the street, they shrink away from me. I have passed out of mind like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel. I hear the whispering of many, fear is on every side. While they conspire against me and plot to take away my life. But my trust is in you, O Lord. I say you are my God, my fortunes are in your hands. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Today's reading is taken from Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. And we'll join together now in hymn number 10 um, from Hatia Te Ariki Heo Koe Noho Ai. And the final verse, which is very well known for Kāria Mai. Matthew chapter 27, beginning at verse 11. Praise and glory to God. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At the time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, What of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus who was called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. 
Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he, re he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he wants to. For he said, I am God's Son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait. Let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried with a loud voice and breathed, breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly this man was God's son. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ always. E te iwi e te hoa e mihi ana ki a koutou noho atu nei i rotu i a koutou whare. I daro i a koutou tuanui. Ka u tātou ki roto ki o tātou whare, i e nei rā, e nei wiki, i daro i ngā ture me ngā tika ngā pūreirei a te kāwanatanga. Ka mihi ki a koutou. Tēnā koutou. The final words in today's gospel is where I want to begin in my kauhau. He pono o te tamate nei a te atua. Truly this man was God's son. These simple few words which fall from the lips of a Gentile are more than enough to allow us to reflect deeply on the significance of today of Palm Sunday. A friend of mine, student at St John's College when we were there exactly 36 years ago, read this passage of scripture on Palm Sunday in 1984 at the college. All the gospel passages are quite long from Lent to Easter especially so in Holy Week. Well, my friend didn't get far into the reading and he broke down. 
He was brought to tears by the words telling of Jesus' betrayal, his arrest, the false accusations against him, his suffering and death. He felt it hard to finish the reading. He did in the end, but it took a while. He basically crawled through the text. We all respected him for his sincerity and honesty in his public reading of the gospel. It was as if he felt the pain himself. It was as if he was being betrayed by a close friend like Judas and being denied by his most loyal and closest friend like Simon Peter. It was as if he was being taunted himself, being spat at, beaten, humiliated, forced to carry his own cross. It was as if he himself was being crucified. We knew that this was not an act. He had read himself into the story of the passion and suffering of Jesus in the crucifixion. It affected him deeply, very deeply, and touched us in the same way. We knew that he took it very seriously, and we similarly today take the words in the gospel seriously. The gospel presents us with a conundrum. That is the contrast between the entry into Jerusalem, where the people are shouting Hosanna to him, to now a different message being shouted out only much louder, much stronger voices, this time filled with anger and hatred. His entry into Jerusalem, his reception by the crowd is something big. It is a welcome on a grand scale. There is noise, there is shouting, they shout out Hosanna to him. Blessed is the one who came, comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. The crowd are welcoming him, waving palm branches in their hands. This is a big time drama because he is a big deal. The people are making a big deal of him. They are taking him seriously and they are taking themselves seriously. However, the Jewish and Roman authorities were also taking Jesus seriously, but in a completely different way. They saw Jesus as a threat to the institution, a threat to the establishment. His preaching and teaching, the miracles he performed, the language he used, was seen to be undermining the system, undermining the institution. As we read or hear the gospel read, it is as if we are there. It is as if we are present as witnesses to the event. Today begins the journey into and through Holy Week to Easter Day, the day of the resurrection. We move through Holy Week where we walk alongside Jesus himself as witnesses and bystanders to his journey toward the cross. Beginning with his betrayal by Judas, his abandonment by his disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane, being falsely accused before Caiaphas, the high priest, being denied by Peter a third time, being subjected to humiliation and shame. None of this is in private, but it is in the open public square. The soldiers just ridiculed Jesus. They mocked him, spat on him, before leading him away to be crucified. The governor was there. He washed his hands of, of him as if it is possible to wipe your hands of any guilt or shame. And it was Barabbas' lucky day. Lucky because he was set free instead of Jesus. The right man, or actually the wrong man, in the right place at the right time for him. Simon of Cyrene was in the right man, in the right place, at the right time, at least for Jesus' sake. He was pulled out of the crowd and made to carry the cross. The two banners had no choice but to be there. They joined in the chorus of humiliation and mocking. They were on the cross themselves. They couldn't help themselves, even though they were on the cross, with only a moment of breath left in them. They still taunted Jesus. The centurion, other soldiers, all these individuals came close to Jesus. The many bystanders, the passers-by, the chief priests and elders, 
All had nothing good to say, only condemnation. The centurion's words suggest to me that this may have been a confession of faith, or at least a hint at a likelihood of belief in the Son of God. In these circumstances, no statement like this can be dressed up to be something that it isn't. After all, the centurion and the other soldiers held all the power in their hands. It could have been down to the earthquake they saw, or perhaps the terror that they felt that might have moved them. In any case, they had nothing to prove to anyone it was all over by the stage. No other words need to be said by those in Jesus' company at the end, when it's all over. All they needed to say, which they did, was who they believed Jesus to be. I wonder what they had to say to themselves afterwards, when it was over, to each other, or to their friends and their family. At the beginning, Pontius Pilate said only a few words to Jesus. Actually, it was was a question, two questions. But the first question was this, Ko te king o hudai? Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered simply, You say so, and said no more to him. He said nothing when Pontius put his second question. Betrayal is a strong theme in the gospel account of the last days of Jesus' life. He is betrayed and denied over and over again, sometimes by the same person. It's one thing to betray Jesus. It's another thing to betray or deny ourselves, to betray our own truth, to betray what we really believe. Peter denies Jesus no less than three times. Peter realises that Jesus had predicted what he would say. But one of my uncles would say about people with shallow faith, Taihua, Taria te tangia te tikaoko. Wait, wait until the rooster crows and we'll see if they remain true to their word. And Peter wept bitterly because he betrayed Jesus and because he betrayed himself. He was there at the very beginning. He fiercely defended Jesus many times. He always showed up when it mattered. He was present at the transfiguration, hearing for himself his own ears, God's voice from heaven speaking. He declared Jesus to be the Messiah, the Son of the living God. So he had a lot to weep about. He showed up when it mattered, usually, but when it really mattered, in this case, he failed to show up at all. Judas, on the other hand, betrays Jesus only once, but once too many. By the time he realises what he has done, it was too late. His attempt to redeem himself also didn't pay off. The money he was paid was now deemed to be dirty money. It was so bad for him, his betrayal of himself, that he was sadly beyond knowing God's mercy and God's grace. All hope was lost to him. The religious authorities betrayed themselves as well. They are more than fully aware that Pontius Pilate had no time for them. He did not support them. He did not care for them. He did not care for what they represented or what they even believed. But they conspired with him to see Jesus condemned and put to death. In doing this, they betrayed God by choosing Pilate's aggression and power in order to enable Jesus' death over their own faith and their own trust in God. Pilate, in a way, betrays his wife's advice as well. When she sent the message, have nothing to do with this innocent man. She at least affirms Jesus' innocence. This is the bigger problem for those around Jesus. People who betrayed him end up condemning themselves. In Judas's case, sadly, it was beyond saving. Perhaps we can look inside our own hearts and ask the question, when have I betrayed Jesus in thought, word or deed? When have I betrayed my neighbour in my thought, word or deed? And when have I betrayed myself in my own thoughts 
my own words or my own deeds? Can I recognize it to know what my thoughts, words and actions have caused? Am I able to overcome the shame, the guilt, if I feel shame or guilt at all, to know the mercy and grace of God that can free me and ultimately save me? It's important to know that these events are part of the fulfillment of Scripture. As my New Testament lecturer at St. John's College, Godfrey Nicholson, defended in his doctrine, Jesus' death was part and parcel of his departure. Death as Departure was the title of his book that he published. Behind the betrayal, the fear, the hatred and the agony and brutality of the cross lies the truth of the working out of God's purposes, the goal of which is life, life in all its abundance. This is why the shouts of acclamation, the applause, the cheering from the crowd very soon turned to hate and condemnation. It was risky for anyone to side with truth and righteousness. It was the easy way out to side with power and not truth because of the fear to speak truth to power. The world has turned against him because he is the truth. But even then, the real power was not with the earthly institution. The real power was not with the Roman and Jewish authorities, with those who loved human glory more than the glory that comes from God. The real power is with the King of Kings, whose kingdom is on earth and in heaven, where he reigns supreme now and forever. Through Holy Week we are present with Jesus as his disciples, looking within ourselves, our hearts and minds, confronting the ways in which we betray him, looking to him as we see him struggle for the courage to endure his death. There are two sides in the story of the crucifixion of Jesus. One is the cross that requires sacrifice, and the other is the cross that gives glory. We know that as Jesus' disciples, we are called to a life of sacrifice and service. Seen in the right way, we ought to view that as both a burden and a blessing. The cross also gives us a good, solid, healthy dose of glory. The cross of Christ is the throne of victory. Therefore, life in Christ is to know that we are the heirs of salvation and heralds of that salvation in the world. St. Paul's letter to the Philippians encourages us to have the mind of Christ before us, to have the attitude of Christ in our lives. On Palm Sunday, let us have this in our minds, our hearts, that though we are in the image of God, we do not regard equality with God as something we should grasp hold of. Let us empty ourselves and take the form of a slave, let us also humble ourselves and become obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. And we can do this because God has highly exalted us in our baptism and given us his name, a name above all names, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Kia ora piopa for um, your word to us from that um, Gospel in Matthew. We're going to affirm our faith together now in the words of the Nicene Creed in Te Māori, Te Whakapono o Naihia. We say this together. He whakapono ana mātou ki te atua kotahi, ki te matua te mana tino nui, ki te kaihanga o te rangi me te whenua, o ngā mea katoa e kite ana, o ngā mea hoki e kore e kitea. He whakapono ana mātou ki te ariki kotahi, ki a ihu karaiti, ki te tama kotahi a te atua, nō no, no tua whakariri e puta mai ai i te matua, he atua nō no te atua, he maramatanga no te maramatanga, he tino atua no te tino atua. I whakawhānau tia, kāhore e hangā, ko tahi anō ia me te matua, ngā nā nei ngā mea katoa i hanga. Mō tātou, mō te tangata, 
mō tō tātou oranga hoki i heke iho ai ia i te rangi. Nā te mana o te wairua tapu i whānau mai ai ia i te puhi i a meri, a i whakatangatatia. I rīpikatia ia mō tātou i te wā i a ponoti o pirato, i whakamamatia i mamai, mate, a i tanemia. I ara ake anō hoki ia i te toro o ngā rā, ki te whakatutuki i tā ngā karaipitura. I kake atu ia ki te rangi, a e noho mai nei i te ringamatau o te matua. Ka hoki mai anō ia i runga i te kororia, ki te whakawā i te hunga ora i te hunga mate. Ka hore hoki he mutinga o tōna rangatiratanga. E whakapono ana mātou ki te wairua tapu, ki te ariki, ki te kai hō mai i te ora. E ahu mai nei i te matua i te tama. E koropikoria nei, e whakakororia tahitia nei me te matua me te tama. Ko a whakapua kina āna kōrero a ngā porapiti. E whakapono ana mātou katahi ano hāhi tapu, ko tō ngā apotoro, a putano i te ao. E whakaai ana mātou katahi ano iriri hei murunga hara. E tū mana ko atu ana mātou ki te aranga mai o te hunga mate. Ki te oranga hoki, ki tērā ao atu. Āmine. Let us come before God um, to intercede for ourselves and for the world. We will um, respond at the conclusion of each intercession. I will say, Lord Jesus Christ, and we say together, Hosanna, save us. Ki inoi tato. Lord Jesus Christ, you from whom angels hide their faces, you made a way to be with us who are sinful. You are the King of Kings, rightly acclaimed by the crowds, and yet you humbled yourself to bear our flesh. You shine with glory, and yet you lowered yourself into our darkness. You are the one who is completely pure, and yet you absorbed all of our betrayal, those wrong thoughts, words and deeds which we have committed into yourself, and did not give evil back. Therefore, Lord Jesus, we join our voices with the Palm Sunday cry, crowd. Lord Jesus Christ, Hosanna, save us. Lord Jesus, we live in a world that is filled with fear, a world that is menaced by a tiny virus that we cannot see and that we cannot seem to prevent. Some of us, Lord, are sick. Some of us are lonely. Some of us fear what is to come. Father, into this world of fear, Lord Jesus Christ, into this world of fear, we pray that you would send hope, hope for this life and hope for eternity that comes through your suffering on the cross. Lord Jesus Christ, Hosanna, save us. Lord Jesus, you entered our world in helplessness. We lift up to you today all those who are helpless, those who are babies and children, for the elderly who can now do so much less for themselves, for those who bear disabilities, for those um, who do not have um, the gift, the benefits um, of um, a great place in society, for those who go unheard, the unmentioned and the unmentionable. For all of them, Lord Jesus Christ, we cry, Hosanna, save us. Lord Jesus, you are homeless with no place to lay your head. We lift up to you all those who are the exiled peoples of the world this day, those who are far from home, those who are on their way from one place to another and who are suffering as they go. Lord, look in mercy on men and women in refugee camps today who are dependent for life itself on handouts. Look in mercy on their children who may be stung to see their parents ask strangers for help. Turn strangers into friends, we pray, those places of refuge into havens of relief. We ask this because your own people knew exile, and because you are the one in whom all our hearts 
find their true home. Lord Jesus Christ, Hosanna, save us. Lord Jesus, you are the saviour of the world. Come into our lives, we pray. Shine on us with your everlasting hope. Bless us with unceasing bounty. Breathe on us with your life-giving love. Settle on us with refreshing dew. Give us hope in place of fear, we pray. Hope for this life and hope for eternity. Lord Jesus, come into our lives today. We acknowledge in humility that we need you. Lord Jesus Christ, Hosanna, save us. We're now going to um, be led by the Hokianga Whānau um, in a song which recalls, um, in a way, the cry of the crowds on Palm Sunday. But I'll invite you to share it together in truth and to say we acknowledge um, that our God does indeed reign. Blessed be Christ, the Prince of Peace, who breaks, breaks down, down the walls that divide. divide. The peace of God be always with you. Praise, Praise to Christ, Christ who unites, unites us in peace. peace. Christ is risen. He is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Lift your hearts to heaven, where Christ, Christ in glory reigns. reigns. Let us give thanks to God. It, it is, is right, right to offer thanks and praise. praise. Ko te hari mō tō mātou whakaoranga, i te atua o tua whakarere, ki te tuku whakawhita ki a koe, i roto i a i hukaraiti. Pāho ana tāu kupu, ki a te aho te mārama, nā kā mārama, e te aho tonu nei tau mārama tanga i roto i tō mātou pauri, nā ui pau te mauri ora mō ngā mea katoa, Nā au hoki mātou i waihanga, ki te whakarongo ki tāu kupu, ki te mahi i tāu e pai ai, ki a eki ai ki te taumata o tāu aroha, he mia tika ki a whakapaingi a koe. Nā au e tonu mai i tāu tama, hei arawhainga mā mātou, hei pono e mana kohi o ana e mātou, i tukoa mai e koe i tāu tama, ki a whakamatea hei toha i te ora, hei wewete i o mātou hara, Kua unuhia o mātou he e tōna ripeka. I tōna wa mai tō wairu e tapu, 
Hei whakakaha, hei arataki, hei whakatūpato, hei whakahau i tauhahi, wai hoki i tēnei rōpū whakātū e karapoti nei i a mātou, ko tōna rite ki ngā whetū te tai a te tatou, ka whakamoimati mātou i runga i te ngākau aroha, i te ngākau hari, mau i waihanga i karanga i a mātou. E te atua tapu rawa, mahi tohu, tino tapu, tino tika, nau te kororia, nau te pūrotu, kororia ki a koe, e te atua, te runga rawa, te atua mahaki. E te tino tapu, ka whakapaengi a koe, i rotu i tau tama, i tohu nei ki to horoi, i ngā wai o ana ākonga, te tohu o te kai mahi tūturu. I te poe mua i tōne matenga, kā tango ia, te taro, kā tuku whakawhita ki a koe, kā whawhati, kā hoate u ki ana ākonga, a kā mea, tango hia, kāinga, ko tōku tīnana tēnei, kā hoatu nei mō koutou, meinga tēnei, hei whakamahara ki a hau. Kā mutu te hapa, kā mau ia i te kapu, kā tuku whakawhita ki a koe, kā e huatu ki a rātu, a kā mea, inu mea tēnei, ko ōku tōtō o te kawanata hau, e whakaheki a mōu mō te katoa, hei muranga hara, mei ngā tēnei, hei whakamahara ki a hau. Nō rei rā mā tēnei, taro me tēnei waina, kā mau mahara mātou, ki au paenga ki a mātou, Te atua o ngā wā katoa, e mau mahara na mātou ki tau tama, ka whakawhetai mātou, mō tōna rīpeketanga, me tōna aranga mai, ka whakamana mana mātou, mō tōna whakareanga, ka tū mana ko ki tōna hairinga mai, i runge i te kororia, i roto i a ia, ka mau tonu mātou ki a koe. Whakahangia i hoto wairua tapu, mea te tēnei taru, ko te tīnana tonu, tēnei waina, ko ngā toto tono o te karaiti, ki a tūhono ki tōna tīnana, ki a uu ai mātou, ki roto i te akapono. Ka aru mātou i a te karaiti, tui, 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 tui a mātou, tui a ki te mamai, tui a ki te tūmanako, Tui, tui, tui a ki te ora. Kei a koe te tapu o te rangi, te oro kohanga rā nō te ao, te tīmatanga, te ōtenga, te āripa me te ōmeka. Kei a koe te whakapai, te kororia, te aroha, i tēnei rā, i tēnā rā, mai a mātou, mai i te katoa, i konei, i ngā wahi katoa, Amen. Ko a kona nei tātou i tō tātou ariki, ka waia tata.
Christ's body was broken for us on the cross. Christ Christ is is the bread of life. His blood was shed for our forgiveness. Christ Christ is risen from the dead. Haere mai e te kahu e ati atua, tangohi e nei kairanga tira, ati karaiti. Whakapaingia te atua e whakamina nei a tātou. Whakamoimititia te atua kua kotahi nei tātou. Whakapaingia te atua e hohau nei i te rongo. Whakamoimititia te atua ko ia te tūmana ko te herekore. Whakapaingia ia kua hura nei tāna kupu. Whakamoimititia e koia nei te aroha. Whakapaingia ia nāna nei tātou i karanga. Waihanga te mātou ki a riti ki tau ake te ahua. Mana kohia e te atua a mātou whakahere whakamoemiti, ko tāu rauru, ko tāku rauru, ka mā kono mātou. Thank you um, for those, I can see quite a few of you here on my on my screen who have joined in worship with us today. Um, I want to encourage you if you have time to um, consider the words um, from Bishop's Koho um, to look um, inside ourselves um, and to reflect on our own part actually in in the sufferings of Jesus but also as he encouraged us to find hope in the glory that the cross brings to us um, that there's a glory that comes in our um, experience of Jesus Christ in this present age but also um, there's the hope of glory and in that then to find um, the strength that comes from God to be imitators of Christ Jesus, to be willing to make ourselves slaves, servants of others for um, the sake of that hope of glory um, and, to share in <clears throat> and to share in the life um, that, that Jesus had um, and sets as an example for us. So the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Please do join in with us during the week. Um, Bishop will be doing Evensong 8 o'clock uh, every night and also after that reading a psalm in English and Māori and giving a reflection on that. Um, on weekdays at 7 o'clock in the morning I'll be leading morning prayer and would love for you to join in with us for that as well. Please do continue to let me know if there's anything you would like me to pray for in particular um, and in this time of being apart, let's make every effort to, to share and worship, to build up a good habit. Um, it's, things start off as a discipline and become a habit and then become a way of life. And so perhaps during this time um, of being apart from each other, we can form these, these wonderful habits, these way, way, this way of life where we're worshipping together, even though we're apart from each other. I'll also be posting some resources up on our webpage um, that help us to go through Holy Week, the eight days that start today and finish next Sunday um, that can help us to reflect on Jesus' journey to the cross um, and his um, resurrection on Easter Sunday 
um, and just so that we can be spending this time not only enjoying Netflix um, but enjoying a closer walk with our Lord Jesus. Haere e runga i te aroha, haere e runga i te rangi maria. Āmine, ka haere mātou i runga i te ingoa o te karaiti. Kororia ki te atua. Kia ora.